Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how to open a Magic the Gathering store in 2018. That is when my store opened and before you guys ask, yes, the store is open but not to the public. Currently there is a lot of expensive computer. So we have on top of my head four MacBooks, uh, each MacBook costing $2,600 or more. And I might get the 5K iMac Pro. That would be me being very, very bad with my money because I already have, I actually have two MacBooks and I only can use one. So we also have iPads and things of that nature. The location is very secure. It's next to, it's very close to Ikea. Uh, it is about 10 minutes away, probably less, five minutes away from Ikea without traffic, of course. And it's a safe location, but I don't want to open it to the public until I get inventory because otherwise there's no point. But I'm going to discuss how to open the Magic Store. After attending MTG pre-releases at your local game store, playing tournaments therein, buying decks of cards, and generally getting all your merchandise there for years, you finally want to open a game store of your own. This is a common ambition of mine, uh, and it's a common ambition for mo many people who want to make it a reality, but few people actually do. So how do you open a local game store in 2018 and increase the chance of the store being both a financial success and having fun? The number of MTG local games gaming stores has been on a rise in the last five years, and it seems like there are local game stores popping up all the time. A lot of people, especially the ardent gamers, have come to the realization that running a local game store is not only financially rewarding, but it can it's a way to make money from your passion. On paper, opening a store in 2018 looks easy. All you need is initial capital and a few loyal friends to join you. Well, it turns out running a store is not that easy and I have somewhat of an advantage and I took many, I was a comptroller for a huge nursing agency with 100 or 200 different nurses uh, in Texas and California. So I would have to fly to California pretty much every other week. So I understand why finances are so important and cash flow. So to help prospective game store owner openers to get a start on their venture, uh, this, these are my five tips I've learned. You have to be actively involved in Magic yourself. Uh, there is nothing that appeals to Magic players and customers like a local game store owner who has a passion for what they're trying to sell and understands the fundamental aspects and philosophies of the game. If you're so mo motivation, uh, is to make money, you are definitely in the wrong business. Um, it's not just business strategy, it is passion. You also have to do extensive research on the number of MTG players in your area if your area is too saturated. So the reason I picked I Ikea was there was a lot of traffic. Um, there's a game store north of me, uh, probably by 10 minutes but it's a very small game store that couldn't hold events. I actually originally wanted to hold events. I had hired a person and you guys have seen some of her videos which have since been deleted and she was supposed to be self uh, independent, if you will, and organize these events and I would be hands off. But after training and I guess our, the, you know, she didn't want to be trained. So that was not great and she didn't know how to do it herself, so then you're essentially paying someone to sit there and not be productive for a month. But you have to do research. You have to research the available number of stores in the area, and if a, it's likely a new store will open if you do well. So you have to devise mechanics to attract customers and new players. Once you find a good spot, you need to come up with ways to attract consistent player base. So you want the players who always show up and then you also want new players as well. 
uh, your need to step up your marketing campaign. And that's something that I felt that I could do better than any store in Houston. And not that I feel, I know I can do better than any store in Houston because they don't do marketing. Uh, their websites are very old, they're not good looking. By the way, the website should be up by the end of this month. Again, it's inventory. Um, it's inventory issue right now. So the last two is establish a competitive edge to ensure that your store becomes a success. Your need to establish ways and techniques of gaining an edge against your rivals. It's a very competitive business. Uh, by this, I mean that you have to outperform them in some way. There's got to be a reason that this Friday they go to your place and not go to someone else's. Um, your store has to brand itself or offer a better service or a unique service. And I think my store does that because, uh, number one, it's going to be the best marketed store. And we already have a lot of really spicy keywords. Not So a keyword is when you Google search it my store pops up a lot. Uh, and, and the website has only been up open for, the website's only been active for a few months and even then not, not much work has done it and it's already ranking very well. And obviously this YouTube channel will help. Uh, and lastly, work ethically and give back to the community. Uh, MTG is a game based on community and propelled by ethics. If in your daily ventures, you have to be transparent and ethical as possible. In a bid to rake in an extra buck or two, don't try and rip off your customers. I'm very much a proponent against nickel and diming someone to death. It's not good for you. And it's not definitely not good for the customer base. So a Local game store is a place for the community to, to meet. It's a place for people who enjoy magic to find each other. And this channel, I'll be point blank with you. I think this channel was negative for like last month because of the whole drama stuff, which was fun for me personally. But if I did want to brand my store, and I do, I don't see any store like getting... I have to be, um, and that's why I wanted. Uh, that's why I wanted someone who could take over this, and that was my concept. Was then I could be less hands on, and this person would take it over, and they would be less emotionally attached, and therefore you wouldn't see what you saw over the last two months. I think for the Christine thing, that was not bad, but it kind of, you know, I I do feel a tiny bit bad for Jacob, although I think he more or less deserves it. And then the Predators, obviously the Predators. And before you ask, yes, we will have background checks on my store. I, background checks are very, very inexpensive. And honestly, you don't want someone with all this like expensive uh, product without having done a background check, right? It's illogical. To save $25, you would put this person in charge of a cash register slash product worth maybe tens of thousands of dollars. That does not make any sense. So I am I'm uh, rebranding myself because I realize that I have to be less. Um, it's not that I'm not going to be honest and truthful with you guys. I think some people right now are lying about the value of Domania and they know it. I mean, it's one thing to say that something like that, and it's another thing to like make a video. And you know, I question some of the quote financial implications because if Domania was really over a hundred dollars each box, then no one would sell you a box; they would just open it. But that's not the retail value because there's okay, that's the retail value of it, but that's not the actual value, right? The actual value is very different. So if for instance, a store buys this $76 and each of these boxes are quote a hundred plus dollars, then what what idiot of a store would sell a box ever? Right? If all they had to do was open it. The it doesn't make any sense. Right? <laughs> Logic, right? I know people are gonna criticize me because maybe they know what video I'm referring to, but you can't assume if every box was a hundred plus dollars a box. And that's what you could actually get for the box. Uh, and you could have fun opening the box. 
and you could sell it back to the store for a hundred plus dollars. No store would ever sell you a box because they're buying in a 76. They would rather have the $24 profit. A $24 profit of the $76, that's huge. That That's huge, right? I mean, that's, what is that? 33% profit that they're just, quote, giving away? So sometimes when people do math, like, I know that, they're doing math. I know that they know that the math they're doing is not a realistic math formula. It is the, okay, cool. You bought a $2 card. It became $20, but now you have to sell it. Good luck selling that card for $20. Anyway, that's it. Bye.